All right, sweet. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, well, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to um this month's version of the investment club meeting. Um I'm just going to try to give it um maybe two minutes just so everyone can settle in and uh and the room fill up a bit. Um we have a special guest with us today. Um you guys can already see, you know, his camera is turned on. Um, I'll introduce him in a bit. Um, but yeah, guys. Um, yeah, if you're ready for today's conversation, um, just drop, just drop a hello or a hi or an emoji, um, in the comment section, just so we can see, um, what the vibe is like. Um, you know, you guys can tell us how you're doing. Tell us where you're, um, joining this call from already here <laughs> all right um sonny um you're in the q a section all right tell me top there i'm glad to have you comments are disabled huh my bad zoom zoom actually did a lot this afternoon um did you hear was a witness um zoom did a lot this <laughs> afternoon but yeah we're going to try to um work with um, what we have, uh, because there, there's basically some changes that they made and, you know, um, it just threw everything off. Um, but yeah, let's you let's make use of the Q&A section, guys. Um, yeah, hello, Nasiruddin, um, Ayodotun, Sholafumi. Um, yeah, glad to have everyone in here. Um, I'm glad that you guys are already getting accustomed to the Q and A section. Um, throughout this conversation, if you have questions, um, that you would like DG to answer, um, you know this that that Q and A section would be a good place to drop those questions. Um. Yes, guys. So let's get started. I think we're three minutes in. Let's get started. Um. So yeah, welcome, guys, to. Um, the February edition of the Rise Investment Club meeting. Um, if this is your first time joining one of these meetings, um, we usually have these meetings um during the last Saturday of um every month. Um, what we what we try to do is that we pick um topics that are relevant, um, and try to deliver actionable insights around these topics. Um, the goal is that you, as the listener, you're going to get something valuable enough for you to take action in, in your own personal finances, right? Um, today, we have an interesting topic. We have an interesting guest. Um, Chibike, hi, I see you're raising your hand. Um, yeah, welcome. So today, we have an interesting guest and an interesting topic. Um, the rationale for picking this topic. So first of all, the topic is... We're going to be talking about how to build an agricultural export business in Nigeria. Um, it's part of our earning in dollars series. Um, and you would ask, oh, why did we decide to do an earning in dollar series? Um, and I mean the 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 response to that is quite obvious. You know, if you're living in Nigeria, which um I believe a lot of us are, or at least connected to um, you know, you know what's going on in the economic situation. Um, it's tough for everyone, and and one of the goals or one of the ways that people are looking to, um, I guess, hedge themselves, um, against the harsh economic realities is, um, people are trying to extend their income, um, you know, streams. People are trying to make more money, um, especially in you know FX, right, um. So that's the rationale behind this series. And then today we're actually going to be talking in specific about how you can build an agricultural business. And we're joined with a special guest um, who is, um, you know, qualified enough to give us, you know, this sort of um, insights, right? Um, we have Deji and Nubi with us. Um, Deji, good afternoon. Um, do you want to just do a quick introduction um, to the rest of the room, please? Yeah, hello, hi. How how are you guys doing? Um, right, like, like you said, my name is Deji Anubi. I'm a lawyer by uh profession, I think. Um, but I find myself involved in the 
export um export space. So yeah, just just going to talk about it, how I started, and just basic um just basic stuff so far. Yeah. Thank you so much, DG. Um, I think I think that was actually quite a um, humble introduction. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yes, um, yes, we would. Um, I think um, you know, as we go on, you guys will learn more about DG and why um he's the um you know I guess like perfect person um for this conversation, right? So um, DG, let's just kick off. So guys, the structure of this conversation really is um, DG and myself are going to have a you know a light conversation for about 30 to 40 minutes. Um, and then, you know, I already have questions for him that I anticipate you guys would have. Um, so um, I will ask him these questions and he will try his best to answer these questions. And then after that, um, we will just turn to the Q&A section where um, hopefully your questions um, would have been coming in. Um, and then, you know, um, DG can just answer um, those questions, right? Um, so let's just um let me just take a quick peek at the Q and A section. I'm seeing a lot of um. <laughs> Digi, someone said hello. Um, Josiah says hello, everyone. Can't wait to hear Uncle Digi. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, someone also asked if this recording is going to be recorded. Um, if this webinar is recorded, yes, it will be. Um, so yeah, guys, um, keep your questions coming, and let's get straight into it, Digi. Um, so my my first question for you really is, um, I mean, I kind of have like a backstory because I saw um I saw your tweet, you know, the the famous tweet where um you talked about your intention to um you know experiment in, in exporting perishables, I think to Italy, you said um at that point. And it sounded like I read I read the thread and it sounded like, oh, this was something that like you had an idea about. Um you 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 wanted to try and then it looks like it you know obviously it looks like it turned out um well for you so my question is just give us the backstory of how you got started um in your export business did you hi thanks very much uh, first of all i'm not i'm not an uncle for starters but no, anyway i'm just i'm just i'm just i'm just joking so how did i start uh, that, was a very, that was a very good question, actually. Um, so basically, I had a juice um factory. I think that's where that's where my um journey began. But um, I was producing um fruit juice. Had the factory somewhere in Nigeria, and it's just like um, it wasn't doing too well or was challenging. So I began to think um, what's next? What's next? What's next? And um, I had lived in the UK for give or take eight, eight years, eight nine, eight, eight, nine years before I returned um, to Nigeria. So I had a family and friends in the UK. And um, so my mom, um, she she used to take her uh, foodstuff to the UK. And I started thinking, how can this be done um, properly, commercially? And then one thing, one thing led to another, um, began to research on was the process of um, actually taking goods to the to the UK commercially, and um, took me about give or take four, three, four, three, four, five years to um, figure out the entire process, and um, yeah, so and so basically, I then went to a friend's house in um, Lekki, and she was like um, a customer in um, in London needs um, X Y Z product. And I was like, yeah, okay, let me try to get it to the UK properly commercially through the right channels. So right channels being um UK customs, UK port health, etc. etc. And um, yeah, so basically that's how that's how the journey started. So just to reiterate, it took about what three, four years to be able to figure out um the process and the procedures. So I'll say I hope I hope that's a that's a good response on how on how I got started. So just to reiterate, I had family, family and friends over in the UK. So it was like, uh, and so yeah, I saw there was a demand. So it was how do I? Well, just a how a how question. How can this be done commercially and at scale? And one thing led to another, and 
here here I am basically. Thank you so much for that. So you you basically saw an opportunity and then you know you you explored it. That makes a lot of sense. So I, I want to ask you from um, I guess like a um yeah I guess you can answer this like the best of your ability. But um I think what people want to know is what what were the costs involved? You know what did it cost you to start? Um what what resources did you need to gather together? Of course you said you started off because you had um friends and family else in the UK and you know that allowed you to. Um, understand a demand um, but what other resources did you have to gather to start and um, um, where are you now how big has this become um, as a business <laughs> um, that's, a very, that's a very good question uh, so in terms of um, in terms of resources so I basically sold my um, fruit juice company for scraps for, for next to nothing after investing over <laughs> after investing several serious money to start to start all over again so in terms of um resources it was from more or less from ground zero um i basically sold everything i have um to fund the business from start because like i said when i started nobody nobody knew exactly what to do how to do the process everything so i sold um i sold everything down to my my vehicles my Plans, my everything. You know, when you have an idea and it looks promising, um, uh, you go, you go all in, or or you go home basically. And so it's um, I started sending emails to the UK Customs, UK Customs, um, UK Port Health, um, UK Food Agency was that yo, I'm based in Nigeria. I want to do, I want to bring X Y Z products to UK commercially. Um, can I please be advised on the on the process? I must say as well, um, many of the Nigerian regulatory agencies, apart from uh, the quarantine service, many of them did not know the process because it's not really something that um, people really do. So at, at the UK Port Health um, gave me, okay, if you want to bring in XYZ products to the UK and to the EU, in fact, these are the these are the regulations. So and it, it's depended on um, the product. So for there are some products that are not as strict as other products, but the products I was focusing on was seafood. So by seafood I mean um shrimps, prawns, um X Y Z or fish and stuff like that. So the feedback I was giving was that I had to have a factory in Nigeria, and then the factory must meet the UK slash EU standard. And so once that's done, they would then send 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 auditors. To confirm um, that this factory meets uh, meets the standard required to process for the UK slash uh, EU market, so the question was, what are these um, standards? Obviously, it's just I don't know. I can say it's basic, but from obviously from experience, but it's just doing things properly. Your clear your your process flow, your water chain, and um, your packaging and everything. So the good thing is that the UK food authorities, they were able to give a give a guide that this is our standard. This is what this is what um this is what you have to do. So yeah. And so the question then after so they came to they came to inspect and audit the the factory. And so that's that's um the first step. So, so that's the that's the first step. Number one, what product? Second step was what are the rules? Per product, so different products have different rules. Again, I was specializing in uh, seafood, and seafood is a uh, very they're very strict with that. So I had to have a factory. So after the factory was um audited, I was then given a uh, a special unique number permission to um bring in the products to to the UK or to the EU, and <laughs> that was just base one. So it's like after after the factory was done. What's the condition for the products to be in? What's the packaging level? What's the labeling requirement? So the only way I could figure that out was simply exporting. Just do it. And so the first export was uh, um, three, four, three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six failures, more or less, on in terms of figuring what what needs to be done. As I said, 
nobody really knew <laughs> anything. But by the six, seven time and each shipment, I was bought in about two thousand dollars per shipment. And this wasn't just this wasn't large quantity, it was just okay, can I send fifty kg? I knew I knew it was going to fail, but with each failure, I simply learn what needs to be done. And so about six, I said six, 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 seven shipments. And the good thing about the UK, which is my primary market, is um each failure, they give you a reason why your product was um was rejected. So you simply work on it. And so I said after six, seven, six, seven failures, the first one went through, and that was our that was ours. And I said each shipment was costing two thousand dollars just because. And so by the seventh one, it's it's um it was successful. So I was like, yeah, great. Next was um how do you then how do I then scale? Um yeah, and so far, so far so good. We are we are here. We are. And so the other question of part B of the question in terms of the is it the market size or the uh, ob, 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 objection. <laughs> so so my next question actually was going to be about you know because so you answered the question i was gonna ask about you know um, how how can someone get started with this um i think you just gave like you know um a, a bit of your story um but um just listening to you 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 talked about all of the risks that you took all of the sacrifices that you made to like just make this thing work and um, I guess the question I want to ask you now is, what did you see? What was the market opportunity? Like, of course, yes, you had um, some demand that made you start, but you would have seen um, like, you know, a bigger opportunity that would have allowed you to, you know, take all of those business risks and say, you know what, this is a venture I do want to try because it will be profitable. So what did you see? What was that opportunity? What was that gap there that you saw? Oh, thanks. So <laughs> that's a very, that's a very, very good question. What, 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 what did I see? Like I said, I knew that there was a, there was a space, a very big space. Cause I, I, one thing led to another, I was talking to, I had a relationship with one of the very big buyers in the UK. And after I, after the UK slash EU have um, approved my factory, he was like, um, if I can get these products to the, to him, He'll buy he he'll buy it off. So there was there was an uh, there was an existing um off ticker. So when you have a big player saying yo you have already done the hard work, which is getting the EU to list your factory or to list your products for entry into the UK or slash EU. So just figure it out. So as I said, he made me very <laughs> a very a very interesting offer. Get the product to me, and I'll pay you. And um, I was like, yo, and then obviously the idea of ending um, Forex back then was like, I die, I die on this line. So that was when the, when the product was having like, what, six, seven trials was failing. I knew in my heart that I wasn't, I wasn't going to stop because as I said, he has made me uh, an offer, which was too good to be, was, was a good offer. And at the time as well, so there was really, really no one in Nigeria slash West Africa doing what I was doing or rather trying to do what I was doing. So I was like, yo, I'm the only one. If this product gets to the UK successfully, the benefits um, would be immense. So <laughs> was what dying on the line. So as I said, I sold, I sold everything, every, every, every single thing. In fact, a friend was like, Mr. Man, why are you doing what you're doing? Is like, you're losing money every other two, two, three weeks and you're still going. But as I said, there was a buyer that was waiting for me, and so was um was what was what the I thought was what it. And so I think the other question as well is that what is um required if I can state um to move products commercially to the UK EU, which is my primary market, because I currently move products to um UK, Scotland, um, Ireland, um, Belgium, Germany, France, Italy, and the rest of them. So it's like I said, the Europe is my primary market um, as an extension. So basically, there are two categories of products. I should actually charge. I should actually charge for this information. Uh, <laughs> so there are two mm -hmm. categories of products. So there's a general product, 
and then there's a more restrictive slash specialized product. Um, so the product that is more restrictive is um your seafood. By your seafood, you, you I mean your fish, your dried fish, your crayfish, your fillets, your prawns, and your your prawns and your shrimps, which is what I what I do. Um, and your your snails as well. So those those are more restrictive. So they are exceptionally strict with that. So that's a product that requires you to have a factory that is listed in Nigeria of which they will come to audit and then give you an approval. Then the second product is the open product. So open products, your things like, for example, um, your your gari, your alcohol beverage, your your milo, your rest of them, they are not as um, restrict. They are, it's not it's not as restrictive as the previous products, but it simply requires you to still meet basic standards. By basic standards, I mean hygiene of the product, quality of the product, labeling information, etc. etc. So yeah, I hope that's answered the second part of your question. Um yes, yes, yes. Um yes, you did. Um you didn't answer one of the questions that I had though, which is um how big is your business now? But um yeah. Do you do you want to okay. take a stab at that? Okay, I will <laughs> I will respond to that question as uh, as 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 I can. Um how big is the how big is the business? As we say in Nigeria, we thank God. We are <laughs> we we can still chop Gary and still chop well. So in terms of the size of the of the business, yeah, we're we're okay. We're not where we want to be, obviously. I'm still very ambitious, but the numbers we our exports on a regular on a regular basis it's it's interesting. So in terms of um figures, we're all right. We're I I w I won't put a specific because this is a public um, forum. But um well yeah, it's something that um I'm happy I sold everything to pursue what I'm doing right now. So it, it can give you an idea of what I'm saying. So yeah, 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 yeah. Basically, business is booming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much for that. So I, I there's a question here, or at least like a comment here that I'm seeing on the QA section. So I'm just going to kind of like tap into that. Um, so it's from Bright here, and uh, I think he picked up on the number where you said uh, the, the $2,000 number. So he says, you know, $2,000 and you did this seven times. Um, so he's calculating that that's $14,000, um, the cost of your, your failure, um, you know, for you to actually, you know, learn the ropes and, you know, finally get it right. Um, it kind of ties into my next question. So I think you can just like bundle it all together. My next question was really going to be about the risks involved, the challenges that you had to face to even make this work for yourself. Um, is that cost of failure necessary? Um, because um, not, not everyone would be able to go through that. Um, not everyone will also be willing to go through that. I mean, you said seven times, a couple of times that you tried uh, before you finally got it right. So is that cost of failure um, necessary? Um, or, you know, what's, what's, what can be done so that the next person doesn't have to like, you know, you know, not get it right seven times. Um, yeah. Okay. So in terms of failure, um, last year I had the bad shipment and I lost 80,000 pounds last year. So 80,000 pounds times, uh, times X, Y, Z life. But I was, that was, uh, I was kind of obviously things in, um, export things go wrong. Basically, and so obviously, I have I have the experience right now, and I and I know what went wrong that made us lose um eighty thousand pounds. So it was simply a a bad shipment, and so what happened with regards to the eighty thousand pounds loss um was um so I ship the goods I ship to the UK are perishables, frozen food, and um so the UK expects you upon inspection by the UK customs slash port house your goods are meant to be in a particular um, temperature. So UK says to bring in goods, goods the t temperature is minus 18 degrees. And unfortunately, um, there was a slight delay in um, 
in moving the shipment from um uh, what are they called again? So from the holding bay to um port out for inspection. So there was a, a there was a day there was a delay by a day. And upon inspecting the goods, the temperature was um of the goods was minus 14 degrees, which was still frozen. But you know, these guys, they don't the rules are the rules. And I was like, the rule states minus 18 degrees. My goods were at minus 14 degrees, which is still frozen though. It's still there's no there's four degrees, but the goods had to be um had to be destroyed. And so it was like, what do you they asked me, what do I want to do? Do I want the goods to be sent back at my own cost? Or should it be um destroyed? And it's like, yo, <laughs> destroy eighty thousand pounds <laughs> worth of goods, but uh, I was like, what's the goods? Are they was the uh, how 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 are the goods? Is it still frozen? And they were like, yo, they cannot tell me the condition of the goods. So you, I couldn't get any information. And I was like, even if the goods are sent back, what condition will the goods um be in? Can I can it still be salvaged? So I was like, there's no point of spending X Y Z money. It comes back to Nigeria. It's um it's not in good a good condition. So it's like I've wasted uh, money. So I was like, okay. Best to just destroy it and I will um shit happens, shit happens. Uh, so so yeah, so that was that was last year or uh, a year plus ago. So the question is um just to recap, sorry. Um going through the seven um seven times, so as I said earlier on, um seven trials to know exactly what needed to be done. When I first started, you know there was nobody could tell me, yo, Deji, this is what you need to do, this is what you need to do, these are your labeling. This is how your labels should be. This is this should be the temperature of the goods. These are the boxes required. <laughs> there was there, there was no information basically. So the only way to actually find out um how it's to be, how how it can be done is simply doing it. So that's the so it's like the first failure. You learn okay. They'll say okay, this is X Y Z. Your labeling wasn't good. Your your documentation wasn't good. This one wasn't good. This one wasn't good. So there's no, there's no other way. As I said, there are no, there's no one who could say this is how it should be done. Because when I first started, to the best of my knowledge, it hadn't been done before. So it's like, you know, we we the sacrificial lamp per se, and and because there was uh, off takers over there who were like yo encouraging me and um and um like I said, if something enters my head. <laughs> We see it, see it to the very end. And yeah, so in terms of risk, like I said, I lost 80K, 80K last year, but um, life goes on. We keep on, we're, we're still in the business. So we know, we then know that um, what to do to prevent um, to prevent the, the issue that happened last year, to make sure it doesn't happen again. It's simply just being exceptionally thorough because those in export in any slight, um, any slight thing, any slight thing like your document, your documents, instead of a comma, for example, if there's a full stop, there's a fail. So you need to be exceptionally thorough. I'll give an example, another example. There's this lady, a friend of mine, she used to export vegetables to the UK and she was doing about four or five tons on a regular basis. So just randomly upon inspection of one of one of her boxes, because the, the vegetables are packed in a box. Upon inspection, they found one tiny ant, a very tiny insect, on one of the consignments. Uh, her shipment was destroyed, and um, obviously, and she was then blacklisted. So imagine you've been doing this for what a year plus now, five tons every month. That's very good money. And the one tiny, one tiny ant found its way into your shipment, which, from a Nigeria point of view, come on now, <laughs> now waiting just is an ant, just one. She, now mistakes happen, but they don't. So she was her product was destroyed, and then she was then blacklisted. So it's just been um, uh, it's just been very very tough. There's no room for um a beg or mistake or is the devil or village people. The rules the rules are the rules, and that's one thing I have learned doing what I do. The rules are the rules. But the good thing is that um once you meet the rules. You know the rules. You made the rules that this is the standard. This is what is required. Then you're good to go. It's nothing. It's not. Um. It's not. <laughs> it's not rocket science. So we're not sending. Um. Uh, sending. Uh. Nuclear. Whatever it is. It's just. 
This is 18th century stuff, basically. Just the rules are the rules. Yeah, that's brilliant. Um, wow, it's, it's quite sad to hear about, you know, just, you know, watching all your all your goods just get um, destroyed. Um, but you said when you started, um, you struggled with um, resources, you struggled with guidance, you know, on how to get started and how to do, um, you know, what is necessary. Um, but at this point, um, what resources are there that are available for someone who is going to start today um, so that they're not left in the blind like you were when you started and, you know, they don't have to, you know, basically, you know, fail to, to like learn the right way, um, right ways to, to, to go about it. What resources both, um, you know, from, you know, from the end of the authorities or, you know, um, resources that we can also like gather like ourselves. Um, do, do you have any resources that you can point to? Okay, thanks. So in terms of, um, yeah, can you, so in terms of, um, in terms of resources, um, so <laughs> thanks to my, 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 my failure in terms of the, the local institutions that I have been working with, they have seen, they have seen the process. And so they then know, um, this is what it needs. This is what needs to be done because, using me, um, they have known um, what needs what needs to be done as well. And obviously, if anyone needs any personal information as well, they can um, send me a a tweet or sorry, an X. <laughs> you can send me an X or whatever. <laughs> I'm just joking. You can send me a tweet and uh, we can have more um more direct knowledge. So in terms, but in terms of resources. Like I said, I was able to do what I was able to do because um, I had some friends who were, who were, who were. I won't use the word backing me, but it was like um, they saw the this could actually work. So in terms of um putting um resources um together, financial resources. So it helps when two two three people come together to do something. So it it helps. So she, it helps when the risk is shared. So there's a financial risk is like. Um, can you come together with two, three people just to try? Basically, you never, you never, you never know. And then as well, in terms of knowing what to do, so the authorities in um in in Lagos, they have a better understanding of what the of what the of what the rules of what the rules are. Yeah, I think that should be a, that should be a good try. I don't know. I don't know if that's that's response is good enough for. Uh, I need further clarification. No, no, I think that's good enough. Um, but I think my follow-up question is that is that the best way to gather financial resources to do this? Um, is that the best way? Does it have to be like you know finding one or two friends or colleagues here who are willing to take the risk, or are there other options for um financing this sort of venture? Um. Uh, okay, so basically, um. I think that if you want to do anything, you need to first show your hand. You need to put you need to um put your money where your where your mouth is. Obviously, I know the challenges with um uh, with resources. Like I said, I sold everything. And when I on the seventh um the seventh um try, I was more or less bankrupt. <laughs> I had less than <laughs> less than forty thousand naira because I was like, yo, and this is what I'm going to do, and this is whatever I did. So um, because I was able to show that level of commitment, I was able to get some some of my friends were like, yo, this is what DJ is doing. Yeah, let, let us also try together. So it's after after the business had um somewhat stabilized. Um we have a, we have contracts with um off takers, then folks are then willing to come in and say, Okay, let us let us um let's join you per se. But in the initial stage. I don't think in terms of external resources slash funding, I don't think um I don't think that's a that's a practical avenue because no one is going to throw in money to something that has not worked. So it's best for our friends, friends and family, or if you have a sugar daddy or sugar mommy, then that's an avenue. But initially though, you just need to be bold enough to um to bite the bullet. And it's from my experience, it's it's changed my life basically. Thank you so much for that. Um, and okay, so guys, um, for everyone on the call, um, I think I'm I'm just going to ask um, DG one more question or like a two in one question, DG. 
and then we'll just um go ahead and just um attend to the comments and questions in the Q&A section. Um, so guys, um, yeah, please, I'm seeing your questions. Please keep sending them in. Um, right after this um question, we're going to, you know, come into your own um interactions here. All right. So Deji, um, my my final question for you is, um, what what's your what's your prediction for the future in this particular industry that you're in? Um, what what does it look like going forward, right? Um, so when you started, you saw um opportunity, and that's what got you here. But going forward, is there still more opportunity for someone who wants to get started today? Um, so that's the first part. Um, the second part of that question is what other similar opportunities, you know, so when you saw this particular opportunity um, a couple of years back, what other similar opportunities can you spot today um, that you would like to share with us? Um, thanks. Um, so in terms of the first, uh, the first, the first, the first question, I, I, cause I was, I'm involved in several other businesses. Just, you know, sometimes you have brain touch and you try one or two things. Well, moving forward, um, today the pound is 2,200 for the Naira. The dollar is 1,700, 1,800. It's the game, the game, the game has changed basically in my, um, in my opinion. With a weak currency, it gives us immense, immense opportunities. So for example, um, I play in the ethnic space in in um, UK Europe, but ethnic space more or less the non non Oyibo market because that's where I have my initial that's where I have my initial um relationships and contacts. So before products used to come from Thailand, um, Vietnam, and the rest of the and the rest Thailand, Vietnam, India. That's where Africans um source their. Well, that's the that's where products sold for the African market. That's where it comes from. However, right now it's a what's a pound for two thousand two hundred. It simply means we have the if we do what we have to do, we have a strong chance of um of uh what's what I'm looking for of being being an interesting player in the market. So I have I am personally not interested in um any other local business per se right now because obviously if you can end forex in nigeria it makes your life worth it and so talking to off takers right now our conversation is not more interesting because the margins are better so it's like okay i've had um talking to some guy there's a big off taker he gets product from um, vietnam and the relationship has a 20-year relationship with the guys from vietnam but i'm like yo i can offer you better margins because the naira is cheaper, the naira is is it's is, is, is what it is. And human beings by nature are very greedy, are very, very greedy. I'm not greedy per se, but if I can make more money switching to products from Nigeria as opposed to Vietnam, offering a 20, 30 percent um discount, it's um it's it, it, it's worth it. So the question is, what's the market? It's 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 the the it's a game changer. We our, our we currency has changed has changed has changed everything and it's a it's a very very it's a very very promising space assuming can get off takers which is which is key basically and then you know what exactly the roles are so unfortunately for us in nigeria we're 30 years late into the game because the market is dominated for a product from um, south america and the asia so for example if, if you look at something as basic as your okra our okra that's most um, Nigerian stick in Europe, it comes from um, is it one of those South American countries, Colombia, whatever it is. Come on, man. <laughs> there's no there's no reason why okra from Ogun State or a village in in, in Ecuador or whatever it is cannot enter stores in the in the UK. From my experience, there's no come that's it's not sky engine we're manufacturing, it's just basic. What these are the roles? Can your product meet some? Um, What's your pesticide level? Is it organic? Blah, 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 blah. It's not rocket science. So, and as I said, just to reiterate, because of our weak currency, our products for the very first time can, um, uh, cannot be competitive. So I was telling a friend the other day, if you look at, um, just for example, I was, I was like, just should be a very, very wealthy state, but unfortunately, um, if you look at strawberries, 
um, um, in January, that's when January, February, that's when they have their strawberries and just whereas in the UK, UK, Europe, that, sorry, in the UK slash Europe, that's their downtime. So just off my head, there should be a connection of how do we get strawberries from just to the UK to Europe? It's possible. I have seen the obviously I'm not I'm not going to do it, but I have seen the I have seen the connection because uh, that's winter, winter in Europe. So that's a downtime. They don't harvest um uh, their strawberries there. That's where we have harvest our strawberries in Nigeria from just. What's the chain? Who's going to be bold enough to do it? Obviously, you're, you're looking at logistics wahala there's um the strawberries it needs to be kept at the temperature so cold room blah 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 but it shows the kind of um opportunities that are available if um if people start to start thinking deeply on what's 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 um what can be done so i think so just to um just to conclude for me personally i am going all in all all in um like i said i have relationship with several um off takers and i'm um, looking to establish more more contact with um potential off takers and being that i can now offer them a discount to switch to switch over on, on the saying i can fulfill your orders because it's one thing to say okay i can do it is another thing to then do it because really do it. nobody wants their production uh, or just lot supply chain to be disrupted you they give you a purchase order you don't deliver so it's but it's where we are right now as a in, in the export business the game has changed so it's something i would recommend people to actually to actually look into it's 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 not it's not rocket science it's 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 doable um so the second part of your question is what other opportunities unfortunately I'm not. I don't know tech. I'm not into tech. What I know is um is manufacturing. That's what I understand, and that's what I've done for the past um ten years. Like I said, I had the I had a juice factory, and so that's where my career started. Let's say manufacturing, and so where Nigeria is right now is um, for example, Nigerian breweries made a loss of one hundred and six billion naira, I think, or there about. Most of the big companies they have been exposed to um, forex, so they have been exposed to forex or um, forex forex losses basically. So therefore, they are looking for alternatives. Can we actually produce some of the raw materials these guys actually need? And again, from my little knowledge, the answer is obviously the answer is yes. It's many many things are not as complicated as the way we we have been. Um, we have been we have been told basically obviously i understand the energy constraints and everything but i think that it's good people start exploring can we produce xyz locally and supply this big um not even the big multinationals just along that um that that value chain i'll give an example of a product i am working on i don't know i don't i don't know if i should but yeah so for example you take your i'm working on um adhesives basically which is um can you produce um can you use a natural rubber to produce adhesives? Obviously, we have rubber in in, in Nigeria. Can we then, what's the process or the technology of this to value, to, val, um, to value and basic value added? And it's not, these things are not rocket science. So the issue we had in Nigeria is before it had been come very convenient for us to go to China. And say you load this with container, but right now, the the we don't our people cannot simply afford foreign goods anymore. So, what's um what's next basically? So, are we going to keep on complaining and shouting of Tinubu this this that door? Are we going to take advantage of our our new reality? In my opinion, the old the old way is gone, it's gone and dead, it's gone and dusted. It's not going to happen. So it's like, what's next? Are we going to complain or are we going to look for? was what is was next so i think so just to reiterate um what i recommend people should look into export is a big market the american market is is huge i was talking to a friend yesterday about uh, god's own country the american market, american market is untapped is waiting for us there's the american markets um agua we don't pay taxes we don't pay duty so it's like 
open, open market, if we can meet their rules, there's the UK EU market. UK market is 1% duty for some, for some products maximum, which is nothing, basically. It's can we meet the standard? Can we have a relationship with uh with off takers? Can we can we do this? And as more Nigerians um, emigrate, emigrate to the UK, it simply means that there's now more demand for Nigerian based products. And apart from that as well, there's a non-ethnic market. So it's a very, it's a very, very interesting space. Like I said, we doubt as a nation for 30 years that the Asians and the South American they took our bread, basically. And so are we, are we going to do it again for the next 30 years? I don't know. It's good luck to everybody. Um, I hope I've, that, was a, that was a good response. Yeah, lovely way to put it. Lovely way to put it. Um, so, you know, Deji kept on um, speaking about the, um, the state of our currency. Um, I just wanted to clarify that like what he meant is, you know, um, with a weaker currency, um, it means that our produce um, is cheaper to um, these guys that they're selling to um, were cheaper than, you know, um, the other alternatives because of um, the weak currency that we have. Um, so, um, Deji, let's, let's just jump into um, some of the comments here on the Q&A section. Um, let's run through them real quick. Um, thank you so much for all of this, by the way. Um, so, someone is asking, particularly interested in knowing how to get products registered and finding true customers as well to close it. Did you want to take a quick stab at that? In, um, in terms of finding customers, so what I did is, uh, <laughs> Google is your friend. Uh, for example, UK buyers of uh, XYZ products, you get a list of them. So you simply make calls or you send um, emails. Luckily, I had friends um, friends over there, because to be honest, when you make calls from Nigeria and they see a Nigerian, um, they see a Nigerian number, it's like, you know, so it's always best to have a contact at the country you intend to, intend to export to as the follow-up. It just makes it look authentic as well, knowing that as well, we as Nigerians, we also have a bad reputation. So off takers there, they're kind of very skeptical about um about um direct contact from Nigeria to over there because that was a mistake I made um uh, I made initially sending uh, random emails or random calls to numbers I saw I saw online. And so sorry the other part of your question in terms of registration or whatever. So it's it's, it's to pick a product. And so some products are not as restrictive as others. So if it's a general product, so by general product. If you're a processed product, for example, if you're looking at your your Indomie, your Milo, your milk, your beer, and everything, those products are not restrictive per se. But unfortunately, unfortunately, they are very big players in that um in that space. So it's just to pick a product. It's to pick a pick a product and what and then find out what the roles are with regards to that uh, that product. So if it's a vegetables. You want to move. So if it's your ugu, your okra, your whatever it is, what are the roles? If it's your palm oil, what are the roles? If it's your yam flour, what are the what are the roles basically? And the good thing about the UK slash EU is if you contact their 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 food desk or their input desk, an email like this is what I want to do, they will, they will send your documents on um uh, on the roles. Actually, after actually, I'll, I'm also going to share a link. As well, um, it's uh, as as soon remember it. So it's uh, it's an EU um link. So they tell you all most products basically once you search for it, um, what are the requirements? If your coconut oil, and any product at all, your vegetables, your any product at all. So they already they have done their their they have done your homework per se. So you just do your reading on it. So it tells you anything, anything, any any product as well. Wants to search for it if it's in their database. It tells you the rules, the market space, or the size of the potential market. This is this is what you need to do. These are these are the conditions required. This 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 this. But the main work really do is can you find uh, can you get your products in number one, number two can you find off takers? As I said, we are thirty years late, so it's a uh, it's a uh, it's not as easy a market to crack, but it's doable. But we're we're late to the market. 
Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you so much. Um, so, yeah, you're about to say so, something. Yeah. Yeah, I'll um, I will share the link. Um, okay. if I can, if I can remember, it. I'll share I'll share the link. I'm sure I'll find it somewhere. It's okay. yeah, I think it's so for the purpose of this discussion. I think it's something folks folks should have. It's a very important. So you you then you then you you then have knowledge. So basically, so it tells it tells you everything you need to know about um each product. All right, lovely. Um, thank you for that. So, um, I think Deji, when you share the link, so um, Victor, you're on here. Please, I'd like you to share um the link to our Telegram, um, here, um, so that like people can join. So when Deji shares these type of resources, so like this link, would we'll, would we'll post the link on on the Telegram group. So Victor, please share that um Telegram group link on the um. Q and A section or the chat. Send it to everyone so everyone can see. Um, so let's move on real quick. Um, did you, I got a text? Um, someone is saying this this conversation is too insightful for one hour. <laughs> but you know, yes, you're now. I'm, I'm actually enjoying this. It's, it's actually packed. I was looking forward to this conversation. Um, you know, and you were actually just so helpful. You know, very very supportive and you know getting here and, you know, having this conversation with us. These are things that you don't necessarily have to tell us. Um, these are things that people pay to hear. Um, but yeah, so thank you so much for that, DG. Um, Olua Shewu here is saying, given the food crisis in Nigeria, do you anticipate the government banning food exports and what does that mean for the space? So yeah, DG, um, yeah, just a reminder, answer what you can. You know. <laughs> <laughs> answer what you can. <laughs> Um, so given the food crisis, do I? I do not. I, I'm, a, I'm a civilian. And um uh, and the, the answer is I I don't I don't think so because any of the days of is a free market, willing buyer, willing buyer, willing seller. If I can make more selling to XYZ, why do I need to sell to you? I'm not your father, I'm not your mother. And so it's like, yo, don't don't disturb me. So um the world, the world, the world, the world goes round. The, the world is global. Basically, you cannot really restrict trade. So I don't think the idea of um, government banning foodstuff or agri products. I don't really think it's it's not going to work. It just you can. So for example, I'm um doing what I do. I earn, I earn forex. <laughs> Why should I earn less when when I can earn more? It's just we are not. We are still not charity, man. I'm not your pastor. So uh, the answer is I don't see it happening because when you create policies as a government, it needs to be in tune with human uh, human nature, just how we are. And everybody will always pursue profits over charity per se. God, 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 God bless us. So I don't say it's it's not it's not practical. Basically, people will always find a way to to end more. So government needs to be more creative and think of um, how can you encourage producers or uh, because we right now in Nigeria, we need the exports. So it's you can't say you need uh, you want to encourage exports, then you don't see uh, you're then banning banning food exports. That's not very clever. Thank you. That was a brilliant response. Um, Kayode is asking, um, what are the documents needed to be able to export? Um, DJ, I think the link that you're going to send is going to have some of that in there. Yes. Right. Can I can I respond? Okay, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. So, yeah, so, so I'm going to send a link, but so yeah. it's it really depends again on the on the, the product. product. So there's yeah. no there's no one product fits all. So it's like what yeah. what are the products? So as I said initially from the beginning of this conversation, if it's seafood, if it's um snails, if it's a uh, gari, if it's uh whatever it is, if it's palm oil, if it's uh any oil or veg vegetable oil or X Y Z X Y Z. Uh, if it's beans, for example, which I think there's a ban on beans from Nigeria, I think I'm not very sure. So it just depends on um, it depends on the product basically. So uh, like the the link I will share, um, you can get more info information. And as well as I said, the good thing about the UK, um, Europe is that they are willing to share, tell you these are these are the requirements. So personally, I can't and I can't give a blanket um response because I don't know the products in particular so it's again it depends on 
it depends on the product itself. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You said that. Um, so I think the second part of Kyrie's question was, how did you preserve the perishable goods? So the ones that you exported, how were you able to um preserve them? Um, so basically, um, we use in the uh, we use um we use dry ice. Um, so dry ice is I don't know is a, I don't know why is is it, is it chemical or whatever it is. So it's a it just ensures that um goods uh stay stay frozen for X Y Z number of hours. So mm -hmm. obviously, as I said, to be able to figure out this is what we had to do. I, I had to do. I had to keep on trying that this is X Y Z X Y Z X Y Z. So the first shipments. I used to use ice block. So when it gets to the UK or more ice block, it has smelted F9, pale. So this is, you then have to figure out, okay, what's the stronger product that can be used to hold your prawns and hold your shrimp? So it was like, yo, so then was like, yo, can we try dry ice? And so the dry ice um, upon shipping, it worked. So basically we then know that, okay, well, this is what we used to, this is, this is what we used. And the question is, what's the, What's the volume of dry ice required? Was this one, this one, this one? So sometimes the only way we're able to figure out everything was you try, basically. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Learning as you go. Um, Stefan is asking for someone who knows nobody, has never traveled out of Nigeria, has no connection in immigration at all. Um, what process would you say um, they should follow to key into this opportunity? Um, can I respond to that? <laughs> I'm a, that's a good question. Uh, I'm 19 oil now. Go out, pray. <laughs> you have to. I'm, I'm just. I'm just joking. So, option B is really sending out um on, your product. Um. So, for example, assuming you have a product, let's say I don't know what product you have. Um, palm oil, for example, coconut oil. Um, it's tough because if you send products randomly to off takers over there, they don't know you. You don't. They don't know you, and they get loads of this. You need to build a personal relationship with um uh, with potential buyers, and I don't see how. Oh, you can just try. Basically, to be honest, there's no harm in trying. You can send send an email. I have this product. I'm based in Nigeria. Can I send you X Y Z product at my own cost? Um, to then see. To then see basically there's no harm in there's no harm in trying basically. So I I would just recommend trying. Um you never know who might uh, who might respond um positively, but whoever will respond will ask for evidence that you can actually bring um the said product. So the luck I had was I already had um my guys were over there, so it was easier to communicate. Um but so but yeah, it's it's still it's still doable. It's, it's just to try. You send you send your this is what I have. Obviously, again, human nature. If you're cheaper than um than prove that you're credible, then I believe that yeah. I believe that I have I have some buyers in Ireland. Obviously, they they have not seen me before. I don't know them. If I see them walking down the road, <laughs> I don't know them. It was just you. I, what I can do. This is what I have done. This is my pre. This is my um. Current suppliers, can I join your supply chain? I was like, yeah, why not? If not, like I said, I don't know them because everything is just um, emails and WhatsApp. So when they need um, we stocking, send me a WhatsApp. Yo, Mister Anubi, we need um, X Y Z quantity. Can you do it? Yes. Again, I met these guys via email, and from emails we exchange phone numbers, and I sent evidence of this is what I do, and these are the products, and they liked it. So the answer is yes, it's doable. The world is global these days. We don't really need to be be over there. I also have a buyer in Sweden as well. Same thing, emails, this is what I do, blah, 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 blah. I have a buyer in Germany as well. This is what I do. These are the products. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know you. You don't know me. <laughs> you don't even need to like me. I don't need to like you, but we're doing a business transaction. I have. I can show evidence that I am competent. And I have the products and I have done it before. So let's, let's do a deal. So the answer is yes. One just needs to, if you want to do something, you just need to do it. You need to be bold enough to take a chance. It can work, it cannot work, but it's always best to take a chance, basically. Definitely. Um, anonymous attendee, what are the risks or pitfalls of exports from Nigeria? I know you answered a bit of this. Um, 
And secondly, what commodities are in high demand around the world? Okay, uh, let me respond. So the pitfalls is, um, if you look at uh, from my little experience, majority of Nigerian goods um, don't really meet the, the requirements. So there's your labeling. So for example, each each product needs to have uh, what's called the nutritional information, i.e. what's the breakdown, what's your carbohydrate breakdown, what's your protein breakdown, what's your calorie breakdown. So if you don't have at least those basic information, regardless of how nice your packaging is, your product will fail. So you first need to meet the the labeling um the labeling labeling requirements, which is basic, I think. So there's a hygiene, there's a hygiene requirements. So what's your what's what's <laughs> is your product good for human uh, consumption? Because mm -hmm. the port health guys they're very strict. So they they offer they will randomly um test your products. Is it good? So uh, so those are the risks per se, and then as well the quality, the quality of your product as well. As as I said, these things are not these things are not rockets. And obviously, obviously, I'm talking from experience, but mm -hmm. it's not um, rocket sciences. The rules are the rules. Can I meet the rules? Can I be can I be meticulous? There's no abeg or I'm sorry or, or no spray before you ship or whatever it is. The rules are, are in black and white. We can all read. Can you meet the rules? Can you meet the specifications? Then you go in. So in the other question, in terms of global product, I do not know. I don't have an answer to that question. It's for whoever to do the to, to do to do the to do your research. What I know is that um the UK, EU, America market, Canada market, it's is interesting. And who can um it's the market I recommend people should Try to play in, especially the American, the American markets. If you can call, if you can play in the American market, the EU market, UK market, at least we speak, we speak English per se, somewhat. And those are, it's, it's it can be very interesting. And those markets still have great opportunities, very, very great opportunities untapped. But in terms of the specific specifics, I don't have an answer to that question. All right, thank you so much, um, DG. So what I'm actually doing is I'm actually taking uh pictures of, you know, the questions that we have here, uh, because the reason is there's still a lot of questions to go through, um, but you know this session only lasts for one hour, um, I don't particularly feel comfortable keeping you here past one hour, um, so my idea is um we will curate um collate um these questions um i will send to you um you can give me um i guess like you know brief responses to them and then we will kind of like do like a sort of presentation on our telegram channel and just like give this out dg what do you think about the idea yeah so that's cool so um can I keep on going for another 20 minutes though if it's possible oh, okay. but okay yeah. okay okay guys you said we should go for 20 minutes all right um, I, I'll still do that. I'll still do that, anyways. Um. Oh yeah, yeah, cool. Yes, but uh, yes. Thank you so much. Far too kind. Ah, yeah. oh, it's just a lot of questions here. Um, let me see. All right. So someone is asking. Um. Oh, okay. Where does palm oil fall? Restricted or unrestricted products? Oh, that that's a very that's a very very good question. Um. So. So the best of my knowledge, because the product I had looked at previously, I think it's not restricted. However, many folks that have tried to bring in palm oil, they have not met the they have not met the rules. So I think they add. So if you're bringing in palm oil, your palm oil has to be hundred percent palm oil. It can't be X Y Z X Y Z X Y Z. So mm -hmm. I don't know the specifics just off my head based on what I have looked into. I don't think there's a restriction on. Um, um, palm oil. I know that in the UK, the Port Health has had calls to recall several um, palm oil products on the on the stores, but the details I do not know. So yes, it's it's allowed, but it's again, can you meet the basic requirements and not uh, not being clever by half by uh, cutting cutting corners? So if your palm oil is it hundred percent palm oil? Is it this one? Is it this one? Because I know that some people add chemicals to their palm oil. Or whatever it is. So I again I'll send the link I'll send should have all the information with regards to palm oil. But off my head, I don't think it's restricted. I think it's an open market. Lovely. Thank you. 
Um, so I, I'll just answer this one for you. Um, so it says, um, please, the rejected products, were they returned to you or you had to forfeit them uh, because they're, you know, being that they're perishable products? So, yeah, uh, did you, you said you had to actually forfeit those products because you thought about the cost of, you know, sending it back to Nigeria and you were not quite sure if they were going to still get back in, you know, good condition. So, yeah, did you say he had to, he had to, did you watch them destroy it? <laughs> worth of no, no. No, no, I'm not gonna say everything we do is, is email email conversation. I don't know these guys, they don't know me. Yo, do you give us permission to destroy the products? Can you sign here? Mm. Can you sign here? Can you sign here? It's like yo, I wish signing I could swear. for you're signing for like eighty <laughs> K worth of your products to be, you know, wow. <laughs> Risk of doing business right there. Um how, how much can one start with? Oof. Uh, so so it's it depends on um of, okay so basically I can answer that question um so basically you can you can start with so I don't know but the issue is um uh, even if you're doing a trial batch over there the clearing fee so the clearing fee is um in the UK which like I said is my primary market the clearing fee which adds up to your your total cost so give or take minimum clearing fee even if you're sending ten kg trial you can at least three hundred pounds. The 300 pounds, that's just a clear product. It's, that's already 600k. So give or take, I would say you need a capital base to try of a millionaire. And then which 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 might not come back to you. So it's just, it's what it is. That's not, that's not too bad, um, to be honest. Um, so there you have it. Um, all right. Ayo Dotu. Okay, so anonymous. Um, the UK inspection audits, um, were at whose costs? <laughs> not the you, not the you one pound. For... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do your thing. You arrange for their, you arrange for them to visit, and they they do everything. And yeah, so it's you now. It's not. Uh, it's business. So it's part of your, uh, part of your business. cost, basically. Yeah. yeah. So it's just. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. So okay, so guys, um, I'm, I'm sharing the link, um, now, yeah. So I just shared the link to our Telegram group. Um, guys, please join in. Um, we're going to collate a lot of these questions, all of these questions that you guys are asking, um, you know, Deji here, and we're going to like give like some answers and share them on Telegram. So please, you want to join that group, um. Yeah, um, we'll pick up a lot of like the responses from this call and just summarize them, and then you know, so this is like a um a decent um resource base for you to 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 get work, you know, to so start work. Um, is there a website to find the class? Yes, yeah, so yes, that um um Deji will also share that link with us. So you want to yeah, join yeah. our Telegram group, you get access to that. Um. I think you've answered this as well. Well, how do you find and identify buyers when you have moved your products into the country? Okay, so Darius, Aziz is asking. Um, do you want to do you want to go for that again? I think you've already uh, answered so that. You cannot. You you cannot. It's best for you to have found um off takers and buyers before you ship because oh, you cannot really yeah. just ship and like okay, <laughs> who's going what? to pick it up? Yeah. Yeah. So you need you need to have have orders. So, okay, this is X Y Z. I I want. I need. Yeah. Then bring it. Lovely. Um. So Afiz is asking, can we just know um the volume in terms of container per year, just to give us an idea of the markets? Ah. Uh, did you, so, you want to? Uh, so again, again, it depends on the. It depends on the product itself. So. Ah, uh, that's a very good. <laughs> There's a market. There's a market. So in terms of the specifics, I won't I won't I won't say, but there's a market. There's a market. Mm -hmm. And the market is the market is growing as more people immigrate. And now that we can now compete with the Asians and the South, South Americans, it is a market. So the specific again depends on on your product, basically, on what you need to do. But there's a market. hundred percent Lovely. Um, Stefan is asking, this might be a bit too much to ask, but how can I contact you directly? Would you mind mentoring a young, ambitious man from zero to hero? 
probably <laughs> doing an apprenticeship or mentorship with you. <laughs> I'm sorry, me. I I, I still define mentor. So, <laughs> I, like I said, I'm I'm very open. So if you want, so I'm on I'm on I'm on Twitter. Yeah, they just on uh, Twitter. Um, yeah. So, yeah, if you want to uh, information, you can always send a a, a DM, DM, and we get straight to the point. I can see what exactly, yeah. but I really don't. Me me me. I define. I did so politely. Yeah. Politely decline. Yeah. 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 So guys, um, just in the in the lead up to like this uh, webinar this evening, uh, I kept on, you know. So when DJ and I were were, were chatting, DJ kept on saying something that always made me laugh, and he was like, "Guy, yeah, I did three to, you understand?" So he kept on <laughs> saying that, like, you know, you know, I, I guess trying to just let me know that, hey, listen, this is, you know, I'm I'm just still out here doing this. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah, so. <laughs> Did you still at it? Um, yeah, basically, he's still at it. Um, you know, it's just an opportunity he found, um, one that he decided to explore, and then you know, um, it's obviously in the process of growing. Um, so yeah. Um, Wesley Samuel. Oh, three questions. This person was smart. This person just hit three at once. So, what if one does not have a factory? Can you still export agricultural products? Um, so the answer is yes. Again depends on the on the products and on the product so with what i do which is seafood you must have a factory and you, they must come to audit so again depends depends on the roles i don't know i don't i don't know the product you're talking about i don't know the roles per product so again the link i will share will give you uh you can then google or search for the product itself and it, it will tell you of the requirements. So for example, if you look at coconut chips, for example, it's not as restrictive as um your 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 fish, for example. So yes, you can export that without too much work. <laughs> too much work well, as long as you can meet um the basic requirements. You look at your plantain chips, you look at your whatever it is. So they are not as restrictive as mm. other products. So again, it really depends on the products. There's no blanket mm. um blanket rule. For everyone, yeah. Can one be a middleman? So um, i.e., buying from the factory and selling to the consumer. Yeah, of course. So personally, I I have uh I have guys I supply over there. I don't know them again, I don't know them. It's like you I supply. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, I don't know after I don't I don't care. Yeah. Just pay me my money. So yeah. it's 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 very doable. It's very doable. All right. Ah, please, any idea on how one can start for open products like yam and cassava? Again, so it's it, it depends on the rules. The rules so yeah, yeah. it's read up on what are the rules, and apart from the rules as well, it's buyers. Like I said, we are 30 years late into the game. Mm. So what are the rules, and then what are the off-takers? If you can answer those two questions, then you're good to go. But the most important thing is off-takers. Everything is every, everything flows. Everything flows from there. You can meet all the rules, but do you have buyers willing to take your product? Yeah, lovely. Um, so one interesting one here. Um, are you open to investments in your business? Is there any structure or plan in place for such? <laughs> that's a very I I I get that I get that on a on a on a on a, on a regular basis. Oh, that's a very good question. So I think that um we can just that can be discussed personally, but not on an not on an open open forum. But I get that I get that on a regular basis. Okay, lovely. So thank you. You you got your response right there. You can just um slide into um Deji's DMs and um yeah um you guys can build a conversation from there. Um. <laughs> can we produce goods based on the standards and sell to DG? <laughs> That's Deji, a very someone good is trying to sell to you. <laughs> um, the answer is yeah. For me, though, I've I've gotten this same thing several because I don't take chances. I prefer what I have done. It took me like several years to perfect. So mm. we produce in house. We don't really um outsource our production mm. to anybody. Like because. It's not just going to work. We know what's required. My team, my people, they know this is 
this is a standard. This is where it is. Mm. And don't just want any external. Yeah, to mess that up. So the answer is, uh, we'll have to decline that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Especially after citing the example that you cited. So that makes a lot of sense. You definitely want to, you know, do it the right way and, you know, how, how best yep. to do it than to do it yourself. Um, I like this question from Damien Ola because I think this is one that like a lot of people would have on their minds as well. Um, how has the Nigerian economic slash business policies affected your business and how have you been able to scale through? Oh, that's a very, that's a, that's a very, <laughs> that's a very interesting question. So basically from the, how it has affected my business, obviously, Naira is weaker, so more or less making my money from a year ago. Then again as well, am I really making my money? I do not know because look at my raw materials has also gone up. So as your pound is going up, your cost of producing keeps on going up. But on the balance, it's more in my favor than um than the than than the other. So how how has it affected me? Obviously, like my cost has gone up. But also the the cost of the uh, in terms of the returns as well, the margins are, are also slightly better. So it's more or less balanced itself out. Mm-hmm. Um what is there another other thing I can think of? Well, it's just normal Nigeria while I know. Like for example, we uh we produced when last week there was no light. Big gens, big gen was misbehaving. Small gen was misbehaving at 2 a.m. 2 a.m. at night. There's no there's no light. Mm. Obviously, we, we deal perishables. My blood pressure was rising because mm. obviously any slight, slight wahala in the product. It's it's I, I know I know the I know the implication because you can do everything right. Just one, once one, just one piece of um, yeah. bad product can affect the full consignment. Yeah. So those are the Nigerian uh, Nigerian factors I I have to deal with. Obviously, dealing dealing in perishables, we need constant power. Basically, but just. That's one of those things. All right. Thank you so much for that, DG. Um, so yeah, like I said, there are still way more questions. Um, um, so what what I'm going to do again here, guys. Um, again, the same message. Um, I've posted the telegram link, so please join that link on Monday. Um, on Monday, hopefully, um, DG would have responded to all of the questions yeah. that we're going to collate from you guys. And we're going to post them there on um on telegram um i think it might also be worth it you know trying to do a sort of blog post about this because i feel like this this is very insightful um i think it's very generous of dg to come and give um this sort of information in this i guess like calm and um, informal um place um so yes so guys um you definitely want to um join our Telegram group um to get like uh, you know more of the resources that DG is sharing here. Um DG, um you guys can also DG, do you want do you, do you want to tell them how to you know connect with you on, on Twitter? Yeah, what's my Twitter? <laughs> what's my Twitter? <laughs> yeah, just search for me on Twitter, DG. Yeah, yeah. DG. Right, so guys, I don't cause trouble on Twitter. I'm just like a spirit. <laughs> so guys um his name is dg anubi um yeah I've, I've typed the name there um so everyone can see you can just search for it on twitter you'll see his uh, profile you won't even be able to miss it he has an interesting bio on there um, <laughs> yeah um so yeah i think i think we can call it a wrap now i think this has been so good um honestly this has been a very good conversation dg um, I really want to say thank you to you. Um, you've been very supportive, like ever since the first time I reached out. You're always <laughs> very open about this. Um, you made it very easy for me to coordinate this. You know, really. Um, also your communication style. Um, you know, was so. <laughs> no, 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 for real. Um, so yeah, I want to say thank you to you, DG. Um, thank you for spending over an hour with us because people usually we usually do this for an hour, but you. You did 20 minutes past the hour. So thank you so much for that. I want to say thank you for everyone um, joining this call. Um, thank you for your questions. Um, I, a lot of the questions that you guys asked me this session um, interactive. Um, 
it, it means a lot of people are thinking through um the this this type of opportunities um it's 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 good to it's good to witness i think um did you when you were speaking you really spoke like a businessman um where you were talking about how you know the even like a, a a tough economic situation can still present some form of you know business opportunity um and and it seems like that's the way that you were looking at it um i think that's yeah. like a very very good mindset to have um so yeah i applaud you for that um so yeah that you can imagine how how important like these sort of like conversations are hopefully this sparks you know a seed in someone's you know mind and you know somebody's yeah. venture you know an export business starts from you know um from this call so yeah thank you so much dg um thank you so much guys for attending um thank you to um my fellow panelist um victor on here as well who was doing some you know support on in the background um yeah dg um thank you so much um still be in touch with you um you're, you're in nigeria oh, oh, moment, man. Right? anytime man so like i said anyone just want... i'm in lagos let's get it for life yeah we, we i mean you should drop by the office Let, yeah i should let's, actually let's, yeah yeah let's 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 give you uh, a, a, a yeah, i should nice, actually nice box. yes please do please do please do, do when you can i'm yeah, um, just let me know oh. what's up yeah. yeah no worries i'll do that nice one man all right thank you so and, much yeah, yeah yeah so just to say again um just to wrap up i think that the export market is what is what exploring like i said it's not it's not rocket science and it's something i am doing it's something that i've been able to connect um uh, a good number of people to off takers based on my uh, relationship that I have built over the over the years. So it's just find a product, anything at all. There's a market. Mm -hmm. There's a market there. As long as it's it's done, it's done properly, and uh, can have buyers. There's a market. It's what is what is what the effort. Thank you so much, sir. All right. Um. Uh, yeah, no guys, way. we've come to the end of this. Um. Yeah, DG. Enjoy the rest right. of your evening. Thank you so oh, no, much. Sir. Thank you, man. Nice one, man. All right, cheers. I'm off. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a nice evening, guys. Over and out.